I'm here today to deliver truth. Listen carefully, because it won't be long before the government gets wind of this, and this isn't here anymore. What you've been taught most of your life is a lie. In 1956, the CIA, working with President Eisenhower at the time, contracted scientists to work out of Area 51 for a mass genocide of all avian beings. In this time, 12 billion birds were murdered through the use of poison that caused their bodies to disintegrate. Every president since that time has known that that happened, with the exception of JFK. He was told and tried to put a stop to it, and he was assassinated less than a month later. You may think, that's wild. I see birds all the time. They're in the sky, they're in my bird feeders. But what those are is not what you've been taught are birds. Those are spy drones that were created by the government to watch you. Bird watching goes both ways. When you're watching them, they're watching you. They were carefully constructed to be incredibly believable. So it's understandable that you would think they're birds. That's what you've been taught your whole life. You may think that you know the cause of the Vietnam War. The actual cause was the export of the materials used to create these birds. Vietnam stopped providing those materials, and so a war was started. So here's what birds actually entail. If it flies, it spies. So those birds that hang out in the trees near your house, are watching your every move, recording it, and reporting back. You may have heard the expression that birds work for the bourgeoisie, and that's accurate. So those surveillance drones were released by the hundred millions to film us. You may think I'm delusional. You may have a lot of questions, like, if this started in the 1950s when computers were the size of rooms, and even portable cameras, when they came on the market, weighed at least 30 pounds. How do they fit into that tiny structure? But don't worry, I have an answer for that. And any other question you have, because that's how conspiracies work. Conspiracy theories have answers for everything, as does this one. So this one was actually created as satire. It's hard to tell the difference between satire conspiracy theories and actual conspiracy theories sometimes. So there are signs all across the country, billboards that say birds aren't real. It's on social media, you can buy t-shirts, there's merchandise. So while this was started by a 20-something college student as sort of a tongue-in-cheek example of how gullible people tend to be, some people can't tell the difference which is understandable, because it has a lot of the same features of other conspiracies. In fact, half of Americans believe in at least one disproven conspiracy theory. So you probably have one or two that you believe in as well. And we can sort of laugh about the idea that birds aren't real, that Meghan Markle is a robot, that the Earth is flat. Some of these are more damaging than others. Nobody's going to be harmed from the belief that birds aren't real. And although it hurts my, my science mind that people would believe the Earth is flat, probably no one's going to suffer as a result of that. These theories spread across social media like wildfire. This internet-fueled marketing is what makes them so abundant. They're not based in scientific principles or in media because the mainstream media wouldn't cover these. So any question you have for a conspiracy, conspiracy theorist, they have a solution for. So if you haven't heard about modern flat Earth theory, this isn't way back when we didn't know better. These are people in current times who believe that the Earth is flat. They believe that the Earth is actually a disk that's covered by a dome, that it is not a globe, and that the government is trying to keep that secret. That's not satire, that's an actual belief. 
there are a few different versions. Uh, there are different sects of believers. Some believe that the earth is hollow, so instead of being filled with the, the elements and the materials that we know them to be, that they're not there. There are believers in flat earth theory who believe that Australia does not exist. It couldn't possibly exist, so therefore it doesn't. We can laugh at this, and there's not a lot of harm that comes from it, but unfortunately that's not always the case of conspiracy theories. For example, a radio host named Alex Jones, shortly after the Sandy Hook school shooting, said that he believed the massacre that happened to be a hoax that was put together by crisis actors, paid for to reduce gun rights. So using his platform, he convinced lots of folks that 20 children and six adults were not killed that day at Sandy Hook, that it was a hoax. What happened as a result is that the parents of these children, while trying to grieve their six and seven-year-olds, were harassed and called names. They were called and told that they were liars. A few years later, they filed, some of those parents filed a defamation lawsuit against Mr. Jones. It wasn't until he was under oath and a sworn deposition that he admitted that he knew the event actually took place but that he never meant to hurt people. In this case, his intention may not have matched the impact, but it still had a significant impact. You may have watched Plandemic. It came out in May of 2020. Within two months, it had over 8 million views. Social media tried to take it down, and it kept re-emerging. And by the end of June, about a third of Americans reported that they thought COVID was a bioweapon created by the Chinese government. This documentary has been disproven multiple times through many different scientific studies and experts, but people often don't believe it. To date, more than 400,000 people have died from coronavirus in the United States alone. More recently in the news, we've heard a lot about QAnon. So QAnon started in 2017. It was the idea that coded messages were being sent out through the media and through government. This started as an idea that there was a satanic elite group of cannibal pedophiles engaged in a global child trafficking ring based out of the basement of a DC pizzeria. Pizzagate, and while it sounds completely absur absurd or bizarre, lots of people bought into the idea. In a short period of time, we went from people holding signs saying that Pizzagate is real to people entering that pizzeria, committing arson, or bringing weapons. As a result of QAnon, there have been multiple cases of harassment and defamation. There's been at least one murder, and most recently, the storming of the Capitol in January of 2021. If you look at footage from that day, there are many flags and t-shirts with the Q on the front, usually with American flag, to show their affiliation with the group. So while it started small, it grew rapidly within a three-year time period. We want to believe and conspiracy theories. Humans have a desire to believe in them. We also like to laugh at them. We like to laugh in the theories that other people buy into. That's one of the reasons that the birds aren't real conspiracy theory is so popular. It lets us do a little bit of both. So we can sort of buy into it while also laughing at the absurdity. So I'm a psychologist and I have to answer the question of why all the time. So why is it that people have to buy in to these conspiracy theories? Why do we want to believe these? And in any explanation that you come across for belief in conspiracy theories is the idea that we have unmet psychological needs in some way. As humans, we have a deep desire to understand the world, to make sense of it, 
we want to think about it, especially when things happen that seem meaningless. They don't seem to make sense. When we feel uncertain or there's chaos in the world, we want to understand that because it gives us a sense of security and control over our own environment. We also really want to belong, to fit in somewhere. We have a need to be accepted by others. And if we don't find that from everyone, believing in a conspiracy theory is a way to get that social connection that you may not get otherwise. One of the ways that we have some faulty judgment that goes into believing in conspiracy theories is a concept called apophenia. This is where we see order and we see patterns in meaningless information. We all engage in this. If you have anything that you do that gives you luck, you have a lucky pencil to take a test. When you go out and play, whatever your sport is, you wear lucky socks or a hat. So your superstitions are examples of, of apophenia. We try to find patterns because it gives us a feeling of control over the world. So when QAnon thinks that touching a face or a hat tells them a message that's being delivered by the president or some other official, if they think using the number 17 is meaningful in some way, that's them using apophenia to try to make sense of the world. Another important thing that happens when we have repeated information that's fed to us is the illusory truth effect. This is when, when we hear the same thing over and over again, even if we or originally thought it was false or questioned it, we start to believe it. It's not a mistake that politicians run the same ads over and over and over during election season. They want you to hear the same material. Because any information that's presented, even if it's a, an exaggeration or a bit misleading, is a way for you to buy into that truth. The more you hear it, the more likely you are to believe it. Familiarity can overpower rationality. Hearing something a lot takes over, and you stop using logic, and you start to believe it. We don't like the idea that something could happen that we don't have control over. The idea that a man walked into an elementary school and killed 20 children and six adults doesn't sit well with our psyche. It doesn't feel good to think that that's possible. It's a lot more comforting to think that that was made up. It was created. There aren't 20 dead children. It's all a hoax. We have feelings that are hard to sit with sometimes. Sometimes realizing that humans can do really terrible things is unsettling. So it's almost a relief to be able to believe in some other cause of that. We don't want to think that we could have contributed to the 400,000 deaths in the U.S. to COVID-19. So it's easier to believe that there's some powerful organization that is causing that to happen. We have a responsibility to make sure that we critically view information. And sometimes our desire to make sense of the world is overtaken by our desire to feel secure or safe in our worlds. While it was never the intention of Alex Jones to hurt the families that he hurt with his conspiracy theory about the Sandy Hook shooting, the impact of that was significant. We've had multiple shootings since then, all of which have been called a hoax by some group. In the world, what we intend to happen isn't always the same as what actually happens. We may have the best of intentions, but the impact of that can be so significant that it's harmful to people. We all enjoy a good laugh that the earth is flat or that birds aren't real, but there's a significance that comes with that and that believing that type of information, believing in Pizzagate, we don't want to think that people we know, the average person, could be responsible for child trafficking. It's much easier to think that that's specific to people who aren't like us, who are wealthy and powerful in other ways. But that quickly can lead in to more serious beliefs that turn into serious behaviors. The problem is, breaking belief in a conspiracy theory is almost impossible. 
I can promise that arguing with people on the internet who believe in those conspiracy theories is not a useful way to try to break them. Interestingly, much like actual viruses, the best way to prevent conspiracy theory thinking is inoculation. Just like we're vaccinated to prevent major illnesses, it's almost like we need to be vaccinated to think clearly before believing in conspiracy. The way to do that is going to college and asking questions. It is a normal and healthy experience to question authority, to ask questions, even of science, to be critical, to be skeptical. It's important to address that without bias and with a willingness to learn. It's important to have basic scientific literacy when doing that. So our goal as college professors is never to tell you what to think. You won't remember those specific terms in 10 years or 20 years. Our goal is to teach you how to think, to give you the skills to look at birds aren't real or QAnon and look for what the reasoning is behind them. If your belief system requires mental gymnastics or the cover-up done by all the governments across the globe, or that millions of people have to keep the same secret, it seems illogical in that likelihood. We have a responsibility as educators to teach you how to think critically, to view that with a critical eye. You have a responsibility as a human, as a member of society, to take that critical eye and share it with others, to help children who are growing up so that we don't have to fight with people in the comments on internet posts anymore. If we can prevent these before they happen, and we'll never prevent conspiracy theories from emerging, but we can prevent the buy-in of them. Thank you.